It's time for this thing to go. What's up, everybody? Most of us stopped using VHS tapes five ever ago. But most of us still have a couple of those VHS tapes with family memories lying around on them that we just don't want to part with. The problem with that is VHS tapes have a shelf life. They have moving parts and a magnetic strip, and those things degrade over time. If you haven't backed those tapes up yet, I highly recommend that you do. The upside is it's really easy and cheap to do. I also recommend that you have a test tape that you can afford to part with. I went to Goodwill and picked up this. Dorf Goes Fishing should be comedy gold. The reason that you want to have this test tape is that you don't want to put your cherished memories inside a VCR that is 20 years old and has faulty parts. You want to test the thing out first and that's where this comes in. I think I've talked about this enough. Let's see how it's done. This is the USB capture card that I picked up off eBay for under eight bucks. It has a yellow RCA video input, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm actually gonna use this. This is S-Video. It should give a slightly better picture quality, but not all VCRs have an S-Video output. So if you don't have this, use the yellow RCA video jack. It also has the red and white RCA jacks. We use these for left and right stereo audio. Looking at the back of your VCR, find your corresponding output jacks. You'll have red for your right stereo channel, white for your left stereo channel, yellow for video, and possibly an S-Video output port. Again, if you have the S-Video output port, use that. This is what the S-Video cable looks like. Simply plug it into the S-Video output on the back of your VCR, and then plug the other end into the S-Video input port on the back of the USB card. Now to hook up the audio output. Most people have the yellow, white, and red cables. I don't have any of those on hand, but RCA jack cables are all the same. It doesn't matter what color they are. I have these component cables laying around, so I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna plug the red cable into the red jack for audio, and I'm gonna plug the blue cable into the white jack for audio. Just remembering to keep it the same on the other side, and it should work. Now I'm gonna plug the red cable into the red input for the USB jack, and blue into the white input on the USB jack. Also, to make things easier on myself, I'm gonna use this short USB extension cable, because where I plug this into the back of my computer is pretty tight, and I don't know if I have room for the full card. This, however, is not necessary. Now we plug the USB stick into the back of the computer, and once it's detected, we should see a green light. Now we're good to go. Now to set up the software, we're gonna use a program called OBS Studio. Go to obsproject.com, download and install OBS Studio. Now we have to set up OBS Studio with the capture card. Go to Settings and click on Video. I'm gonna leave the base canvas resolution and the output scaled resolution at 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna change the common FPS values to 60. Now you can change this if you want. You can set the resolution smaller because standard VHS resolution is really only 333 by 480 pixels. But I'm gonna leave it at this larger size. So if I want to edit the footage in a video editor later, I'll have that option. Also, when I tried to set the resolution super small in OBS Studio, I got some really wonky footage out of it. So I'm just gonna stretch the video out to 1920 by 1080 and not worry about conforming to a VHS resolution. If you don't know much about video formats, click on Output and under the Recording section, change the recording format to MP4. MP4 is a fairly universal format that is read by most players and most video editing software. So if you're not sure what you wanna work with, just change it to MP4. You can also change the path that the videos are saved to here. If you're not worried about it, just leave it the same and it'll save to your videos folder in your Windows profile directory. Go to Scenes, click on the plus icon, and add a new scene. Enter a name of the scene, and I'm going to call this one USB, and click on OK. Now for that scene, we have to add a source. Under Sources, click on the plus sign and select Video Capture Device. Where it says Create New, type in USB Capture, or anything you want, really. The name doesn't matter. And click on OK. 
Now select OEM device in the device field and then click on configure video. I had to change my video standard to NTSC underscore M and then click OK. If you're in North America, NTSC will be your standard. If you're in Europe, PAL will be, I think, I guess. Then click on configure crossbar. If you're using S-Video, change the video input to S-Video in and hit OK. Then you should see video being input to the card. As you can see, I've got this bar of jumbled mess at the bottom of my video. The way I'm going to deal with that is resize the video so that that jumbled mess hangs outside of the recording area of the video. Just grab a point on the red bar and drag it until that part is out of the black. Then move the video from the card input until it's centered up. You should have some black bars on the side, but that's okay. Oh, dwarf. You know, people used to actually laugh at this stuff. Once you've got everything configured, you can hit Start Recording when you're ready. By default, it will save your videos in your My Videos folder in your Windows user profile. I'm going to do a test recording here to see how it works. After I hit Stop, that video will appear in my Videos folder. Sure, sure. The, well, at least we got them over that the business of laughing at each other like they <laughs> used to do on the Burnett Show. We straightened them out finally. As an added bonus, you can also use this little device to capture retro console game footage. It's not as high quality as something with an HDMI output, but things like the NES through the era of the PS1 ship with analog cables anyway, and if you don't have anything better, why not? So I really hope you found something in this video useful. If you did, consider subscribing and leave me a like. It really helps the channel grow. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.